I was just as enamored with Furiosa as oh, yeah. I was with Fury Road. Um, I, just as soon, because I wa actually walked out, because I saw people on, someone on Twitter was like, who asked for this? And I was like, literally me. <laughs> if, as soon as Fury Road was over, I went to my wife, I want a Furiosa, like I don't even need Mag Mad Max anymore, get him out of here. I want Furiosa movies for the rest of my days. Like I just, I liked her so much. They had to go backwards though. I know. Mm. It's, the, it's a perfect, perfect ending. Yes. And the same with Max. They have to go backwards because that is such a perfect. I do wish that we still had Charlize Theron. I understand we can't because it's a little girl, but I, she could have, right? They could have just like younger down you a little bit. You had trouble with the special effects yeah. as it was. Yeah. It would have been a little bit too um, yeah. uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Young John! What's up to our sidekicks and henchfolk out there in the mother loving geek nation? You're currently tuning into the. <laughs> I'm sorry, Somebody I wasn't even read. reading it. Uh, oh, hold on. I'll do it again. This is going to be great. Right, What's sorry, up sorry. to our sidekicks and henchfolk out there in the geek nation? Witness us! The Cold Pop Podcast, number episode 78, a show where we talk about movies and TV and comics and. Uh, Open the wasteland and all the other things that scratch your nerdy itch. We're coming to you live from Young Junk HQ, Young Young, Philadelphia's Young Young. premier Young podcast production space. Young Junk. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. <laughs> I'm your war boy host, J JD of Johnny Destructo's Hero Complex, located at 4327 Main Street. It's a rad ass comic shop uh, that caters to nerds and nerd adjacent individuals such as yourself. So please come see me and give me a little beep boop. Uh, with me tonight to talk is Alice. Hi, it's me. And Noel. Hello. Also in the booth is our trusty producer, Dylan. <laughs> Dylan the Great. Uh, Eddie Madison is in the chickity chat. Saying, howdy, y'all. How hey, are Eddie, you doing today? Day. Eddie, welcome back. We haven't heard from you for a while. We hope you're doing well. In like weeks, my dude. Uh, before we jump into the show, we want to shout out the Facebook group Omnibuds Cafe, a community obsessed, obsessed with graphic novels, comic books, and manga. We're lucky to be there. We're lucky enough to be there. YouTubers of the month. Well, just for May. I think it's going to end soon. It's almost done. So that Aww. means that anyone that is a fan of that and a fan of this has to stop one of the other, right? It's like a, it's a binary choice. You can't, oh, yeah, you it's all choose. or nothing, baby. Outside of the month of May oh, in wait, the year it, of our Lord, 2024, you're not allowed to one consume one of the podcast other. enters. Two podcasts. Well, two, 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 two podcasts enters. One, 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 one podcast leaves. One podcast enters to become pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I messed third. up the numbers on that. Girl math, it's fine. <laughs> Please feel free to comment, <laughs> like, subscribe, like Eddie Madison is doing in the chat. Get in the chat. Tell us how you're feeling. Uh, email us at coltpopgo at gmail.com. Just like long friend of the show, Pink Apocalypse did, we have a letters. We got we letters. letters. We have letters. We, we got have lots and lots and lots and lots of letters in the form of sentences hey and paragraphs. Hey, people. Just wanted to let you know that there are movies you have talked about that I've never seen. So for funsies, started doing that. For a topical reason, my husband and I started with Mystery Men. Oh, I hope I oh I'm okay. Hang on. Let me prepare myself for Pink's thoughts. Okay. Oh. Hamana 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 hamana. Here we go. go. Uh hmm. Oh fuck. <laughs> it started out with camera work aping Burton. Yeah. Using music aping El Elfman. Yeah. And then several moments of awkwardness later, we looked at each other with painful expressions and admitted that to us, subjectively, it was beyond terrible. Yeah. Like, we were confused and cringing at how bad the comedy was. <laughs> Ooh. When we saw the two plus hour runtime, we tapped out. I think it was the 10 minute mark. Oh my God. <laughs> God bless you, brave souls, for revisiting whatever that was. Uh, I, We've never seen Scott Pilgrim what? before, so we're watching that this weekend and hoping for a better outcome. Peace. Okay. Scott wait, 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 before we get into how great Scott Pilgrim is, um, I wish you guys would have made it at least to the midway point when something wildly shocking happens yeah. and the movie just becomes different. And you forgot to mention that they are also aping Joel Schumacher really hard, really hard. almost more so than Burton. Yeah, for so. sure. Thumbs up. I'm glad you hated it. Yeah, at the glad time. Glad you hated it. I'm going to start saying that. Yeah. Glad you hated glad it. Glad you hated it. I respect um, the, the, the struggle. I respect the, the, the try. I am. Thanks for trying it out. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. Uh, let's see. Sam C says, 
Hey, Sam. Hola. So uh, that was the intro and the letter section of the show, and I think they went really well. We're about to get into my second favorite part of the show, which is called, What Have You Been Up To This Week, Huh? Wherein I ask my friends, what have you been up to this week, huh? I'm going to start with Alice. <gasps> Me. Implying friendship. What have you... Oh, no. <laughs> Are we not... You know, you don't know. What have you been up to this week? Huh? It, feels like, it feels like you're really like pressing, and it's getting a little. My very good friend it's Alice. Little, yeah. It's a little bestie. thirsty. It's what a little have you been up thirsty. to this week? Huh? A little thirsty. It's a little thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. I watched a movie that you let me borrow, literally months and months and months ago. Oh and I yes. Finally got around to watching, um, The Descent from 2005, directed by Neil Marshall, <laughs> and it was so good. But I was freaking out. Yeah. I to, I was pacing because all the claustrophobia and all the tight spaces and all the dark. I'm Kos and I do enjoy doing like outdoor adventures, like we like hiking and mountain climbing and yeah. stuff. We had literally actually just gotten back from REI, like s stocking up on like hiking gear and stuff. Yeah. And I went to the other room. Kosa was doing work, and I go, I'm like, we're never going in a cave. And <laughs> just walked out, and he's like, all right, okay. never I, do I, in cave stuff. That is a solid ass rule. I like, no, I draw the line at caves. Mm -hmm. I will hike up things. I will not go down. <laughs> Yeah. I'll go under the ground. Into things. I'm gonna go into the ground. Yeah. No, thank Otherwise, you. Otherwise, you're never coming down. Yeah, from I know. Mountain. I stay yeah, up I'm there. I'm going up. Although, the That's des it. Yeah. descent down the mountain is, yeah. I, in my opinion, scarier than hiking up it. Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. It's Absolutely. a lot harder. Yeah, like, because your leverage is forward. So it's a little easier to keep I balance versus. fell and had the infamous pokey in the eye That's to Costa. Right. And he Damn near messed up almost for a while. murdered your fiance. I kind of did, but he saved my life. We're all okay now. It's nice. fine. But yeah, anyway, points, I really, really liked it. And I'm looking forward to watching more Neil Marshall movies. Oh, yeah. Like? There's so many. So uh, Neil Marshall is a wonderful director from Ireland. Dog Soldiers. Um, awesome. Doomsday. Awesome. Uh, Descent 2. <laughs> also awesome. Uh, and the most recent Hellboy, which we don't. A lot of people don't talk about Pretty but good. I think it's, uh, I Pretty think it's good. decent. Yeah. I don't know if I've seen the most recent Hellboy. I've seen solid. some of the older ones. But it's I'd solid. be interested. It's solid. Yeah. Solid. So, uh, no, yeah. Neil Marshall's great. He's yeah. also done a lot of television. He's he is a solid ass horror director. Even uh, when the movie, it. air quotes, sucks, it's visually fun. Yeah, you know, like there's, uh, Dog Soldiers was the first thing I ever saw of his, and it's giant man in suit werewolves versus soldiers. I see. You said that to me. You're like, I'm giving you this. It's soldiers versus werewolves in Ireland. I'm like, yeah, there's, that's all. It checks all my boxes. Let's go. <laughs> there's one particular fight scene in the third act of that movie that I just, I, I plays in my head over and over again. Really? Yeah. We're, I, I, been so long I, since I've seen I can't it, I talk about the details because they're wonderful surprises, but mm. there's, there's one character that's, I don't know. It's just okay. so good. Nice. We'll talk later without you oh, I'm sorry. or watch it. And then we'll talk again. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I love The Descent. I saw that yeah. years and years and years ago. I had no idea who Neil Marshall was. Mm -hmm. I had no idea who anybody, in, I mean, I still don't know anybody in the movie, I don't think. Mm -hmm. um, but I just happened upon it somehow. Maybe I just rented it from Blockbuster or something. Yeah. Um, and I just couldn't believe how good it was. It was It was really good. Like it, I, All the acting is really, really solid. Yeah. Um, the framing... It really puts you in those caves and in those I tight spaces. I freaking out. Like, I, yeah. like I, I was, I'm not joking. I was pacing. I couldn't sit on my couch. I was yeah. like, okay. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, in an open room. but also. No, yeah. I mean, I, I did it to myself. I knew what the movie I was could, about. I could do jumping <laughs> jacks. I can, I can, I can, it's fine. I'm not touching anything. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a rough movie. It yeah. reminded yeah. me of a movie that's not as good, but I liked when I was 16, uh, Catacombs. Yeah. Had his pink in it, just like the tight spaces claustrophobia aspect of it. Pink, pink. pink. The All singer right, is in it. it yes, I um, forget the other actress's name who stars in it, but I watched that when I was sixteen. I was like, oh, this is so two thousand seven like, catacombs. It's very like they get stuck in the catacombs of Paris, so it's a very similar concept, like tight spaces, darkness. You Here don't know go. how to get out. And, uh, yeah. Oh, Shannon Sossman, you know her. Oh, I like her. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, pink. Other people. I think I saw that too. Mm -hmm. I, I saw I, I revisit I think when I had COVID I watched it again and I was like okay this isn't as good as I thought it was when I was younger I but it was a, I think I took a break from horror in like the I want to say late uh, early 2000s from like maybe 2006 7 to I don't know mid aughts because I everything was nothing was really grabbing you not really mm -hmm. no see that's when I was like just getting into horror like yeah not not a not to be a hater probably like post uh, post scream copycats like 10 yeah. years oh, uh, that like 10 years after 96 so like from you know 2006 to, to yeah where it was just 
It was like a copy of a copy of a copy. Yeah. Like everything was kind of like yeah. self-referential and Xerox. Yeah, to kind of find the, the gems. In the a little bit, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the descent. Like yeah. The, um, Sam says, countries. I want to go to the caves along the Sicily coastline. Cool. And then he goes to says, ciao. ciao. <laughs> um, I, I have accidentally come across <laughs> stories, either TikToks or YouTube videos or whatever, uh, and discovered that people have gone down into caves and then get themselves stuck in such a way. Mm-hmm. And that's just the end of them. I... And I can't. So the Sicily coastline that uh, Sam is referring to is just like, you're in a gondola with a guide and they go underneath and you're just in like a grotto and it's pretty. Oh, I see. It's not like, let's all put on gear and, and go to town yeah. and find ourselves again. No, it's, it's hella controlled. <laughs> yeah. I even, um, I think I'm 14. My family went on a trip in New York to a place called How Caverns where you like take an elevator like, underground oh. to go into caves and it's like open and everything. But even that, I was like, I don't like how far underground I am right now. Yeah. <laughs> I was we, like, I... On our, on our, on our COVID honeymoon, we went to uh, Shenandoah Valley and they have a lot of lime caves and stuff. And it's, it's all like very touristy mm-hmm. where you're just like walking down a path with rails, but you're actually going underneath everything. And I was just, there was a couple of moments where it was really dark and it was just like, if the power went out uh, or mm. something happened outside, yeah. I'd be fine, but this would suck ass. And then I, also after like an hour of just looking at cave walls, I was like, well, uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Can we leave now? Is, uh, is there going to be like a show and a <laughs> snack or Costa brings up Costa brings up 127 <laughs> hours. Oh my God. I Holy saw that sh- in theaters and yeah. a woman in the theater passed out. I, oh, I get it. I, get I, it. Um, I managed a movie theater at the time and we knew exactly when it was going to happen and you would just open the door didn't have to go inside the theater just open the door to listen to the sound effects of oh. this of him breaking his own like yeah. the snap and then the like just yeah, yeah, yeah. going yeah. and then everyone's like sighs or ooze or yeah. it was fun oh, that part was oh fun my God. yeah just yeah. open up the booth door like, and hear the oh. yeah so if you haven't seen the descent uh don't look it up don't because i i went in having no idea what the movie was I just knew the basics, like they go into a cave. I didn't That's know I knew. anything cave. else. Spelunking. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so do women, yourself a five favor. Five women get caught. Uh, yeah. like spelunking get caught in a cave. Yeah, yeah that's it. it. That's yeah. all you need to know. Mm-hmm. Um, Noel, what have you been up to this week, huh? Um, I have been catching up on a, uh, a internationally popular television show that many of you might have heard of called Doctor Who. <gasps> I have heard. Um, season one or series 14. Depends on how hardcore you are. Is that it? Does that annoy you at all no i don't give a shit good okay um it's doctor it's the 15th doctor yeah the only reason why they've uh demarcated is because uh season one this this current season this most current season is the first um co-production with disney yeah so it's streaming exclusively on disney plus everywhere except in the uk Mm. you seem to know season one you seem to know some stuff about things with disney's involvement do they have anything to do with the show itself or is it just a distribution? Deal? Just distribution. Because I'm seeing a lot of, ah, Disney ruined it, ruined. And I'm like, I, no, I don't Disney think gives, they had anything to do with the show. They just. Disney gives no notes. Give so it it's, it's exclusively, it's exclusively produced by the BBC, BBC one. And it used to air on BBC America and streaming. Mm-hmm. The streaming rights were bought for those first 13 seasons by prime and then now they're on Max. Now they're on HBO Max. Um, they made a deal. The show was being reworked and Disney entered the chat saying, we will pay you so much money for that Disney just money. for the streaming rights. Mm-hmm. And BBC said, BBC said, yes, they took that money and they increased the budgets for the shows exponentially. Oh, nice. So has Disney improved the show? Yes, because it's a prettier Better special effects, longer production I noticed that. value. Um, do they have anything to do with the show? No, not at all. So continue. Anyway, um, Dr. so uh, the it's the the Disney era started last year with uh, the 60th anniversary episodes. It was all those. They were great. Three feature length episodes uh, with the 14th Doctor, who was a repeat of the 10th Doctor. You should watch it. It's fun. Coast at Coast is a huge Doctor Who fan. Hosty, you're really? the best. Jump in the chat. Why are you yeah. making watch this good stuff? Making her watch the Hoomst. Hoomst. The, the we have we, we have watched some of the Hoomst. Okay. I have enjoyed what I've uh, seen. I just haven't seen a lot of it. This I, need most, to, I need to dive in. This most recent doctor. Uh so what happened at the end of those three anniversary episodes, they basically re 
refreshed the doctor as a character altogether mm. uh through timey wimey story purpose bullshit um he is literally a different person uh and it's awesome this new actor in shooty gatwa is so charming and cute and funny and the show is big and silly there's musical numbers it's colorful it's really great so the first two episodes uh the, the very first episode was christmas every christmas there's a one episode it was like a one-off to introduce him just started that. the first two episodes are weird with space babies and booger monsters and um and then a interdimensional or, or like a a mixel piddlic but music and eats all music and they have to save the Beatles. It's fucking weird. Yeah, yeah. It's all weird. Then episode three happens and it is a goddamn masterpiece. It's called Boom. It is what they used to call bottle episodes yeah. for oh, Star yeah, Trek, where yeah. it's like one location, one problem, the whole hour. It has to do with a landmine and an impossible solution. And it is so fucking good. Ooh. It's so good. It's scary. Like, it's it's a uh, crazy and then all of a sudden it's political and then all of a sudden it's message then all of a sudden it's time you want like it's awesome absolutely awesome and then the most recent one uh was a weird horror story uh about love that uh like she like it was called 73 yards and this woman is being followed by someone they could barely see and they're always 73 yards away from them no matter what and Anytime someone go like, you know, she'll, she's being followed by this old lady. She'll be like, do you see that person? And they're like, oh yeah, I see that person. And you go ask her what she needs. They go to talk to the lady and then they go off screaming, running. And you don't know why you don't know how it's very creepy. It's very cool. Oh, but, but I want to see this. It's the, it's the, the like malleability. Yeah. I was just thinking that. Yeah. The malleability of Dr. Who is so awesome. Like it's talking babies in space and then weird full core yeah. week after week and then like it's such a good show yeah uh, it's I, so good i have been people have been trying to get me to watch the Homest for like a decade now and <laughs> i i dipped in with the first the first uh the second first series tenet tenet no eccleson eccleson you tried eccleson yeah, i tried eccleson. i started with eccleson and i was like this is fine for everybody um but i have found that i really like the other guy. Tenet. Tenet. Mm -hmm. I like Tenet from like... Um, I also like the movie Tenet. Oh, yeah. Hey. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> time you want From mm -hmm. uh, which Madilly? Oh, Jessica Jones and stuff like that. Like, I Jessica. like him a lot. He's oh, great. Oh, yeah. I forgot he's in Jessica yeah, Jones. he's the purple man. He's also um, in the fourth Harry Potter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with a weird tongue. But, yeah, um, that's his thing. I, so I really <laughs> like the, the 60th anniversary specials. I thought those yeah, were, were awesome. Great. Those got me sort of primed for this. I, I do want to um, continue. Uh, I... Put on the Christmas episode, which is after those three. And I just haven't made my way through it yet. I keep um, getting distracted by having a family. I Goblin have... pirates that sing in the sky and eat babies. Oh, wow. Yeah. There's a bit from Doctor Who that Coast and I still quote. Um, it's the, whenever we hear Toxic by Britney Spears, we're like, ah, classic Earth ballad. <laughs> I say that in one episode. They're like, wow. Is like, that from who? Let, yeah, they're no, like, let us play a classic Earth ballad. And they put on Toxic by Britney Spears. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, Coast is in the chat. I will not yield. Uh, Costa, who's your first? Who's your doctor? Um, oh, Sam C jumped. Oh, John Hurt is my favorite. Yeah, dude. I, John Hurt. Uh, what? Mm. I'm. I feel like that's a mild cop out. I He's was maybe your favorite, but who different. is your doctor? Like your first. Uh, explain your this to me. Uh, John Hurt is the war doctor who's only been on screen twice. Oh. Uh, Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> All caps. So you know he's not I mean, John, I, um, Did you see the 50th anniversary special in theaters like I did? Did uh -oh. you? Did oh, you? Oh. Or were you not cool enough? Matt Smith is mine, says Sam C. And there was mention of fish fingers and custard for the first time in a long time. So sad. Uh, I guess no mention. There was no mention or there was a mention for the first time in a long time. Yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but also satisfying. Who was your first Doctor Who? Was that to me, Sam? Who are you asking? Um, first was Chris. Mm -hmm. Christopher Eccleston. I think, oh. Costa, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to guess your favorite is also Matt Smith. Yes. Who's the bow tie one? Matt Smith. Matt Smith. Matt Smith. The one Smith. who looks a little bit like Frankenstein's monster. Ooh, shots fired. Rock. <laughs> is not he? You bet. That would be my guess after John Hurt Forehead would be hair. Matt Smith for Costa. And I was going to say maybe Tenet, but I want to say Matt Smith. My first was Paul McGann, and my favorite is Peter Capaldi. Oh, that's a good one. I've, yeah. 
Bow ties are cool. Bow ties are cool. Yeah. Bow that was one of the first things I knew about Costa is that he loves a bow tie. I actually bought him a bow tie our first Christmas together from like Dr. Who. He's like a, a Dr. Who bow tie. Yeah, I got him a fez too. Nice. Yeah. So cute. Yeah. Uh, JD. Oh, hey, hi. Hello. What have you been up to this past week? Uh, the, the prior seven days to today. Huh? Uh, I'll tell you. Um, so uh, I have been helping my wife. My wife has a hair salon. My wife. My wife. Oh, God damn it. Um, and uh, Costa can't wait until can't we're even, married so that he I can start doing that. Um, like I hate, I hate it, but there's something in me that has to do it. Um, so I uh, do it. I've been helping um, like renovate uh, painting walls. Who and, have you been helping paint? I've been. What? My, who, who have you been helping? My wife. My wife. My wife. <laughs> <laughs> and it always makes me smile, too. That's the most annoying thing. You need to jump at um, it, too. Um, okay. So uh, while doing that, while I had the rollers going and the whatnots, I was like, let me know what I'm going to put on my, my earbuds and listen to a YouTube. And uh, I wound up putting on at your recommendation uh why because, why did i recommend it because i walked into the, oh, so he was working sunday yeah uh at my shop and i walked into uh the shop and i was like we have a big tv up there and i go are you watching is dinner? that is that ben affleck daredevil daredevil 2003 absolutely that was. masterpiece the daredevil that changed ben me affleck. as a 10 year old mark stephen johnson i when uh when i cover the shop when i cover jd's hero complex uh located, located at 4327 main street philadelphia pa it's a rad ass comic um, shop when i when i cover the shop i take that role seriously yeah. uh in so much as distractions are the devil's plaything, and i will put on something that i don't want to watch mm -hmm. Something that isn't compelling or good or necessarily good. I don't understand how this relates to the so, movie. So I will. <laughs> so I'll put on Batman and Robin. I'll put on. What? I'll put on. <laughs> how dare you? No, uh, <laughs> Age of Apocalypse. Oh, I'll okay. put on um, really just any bad uh, superhero. Nicholas, Nicholas something. Cage's Ghost Rider. Yeah, Nicholas Cage's Ghost Rider. That went on also. Batman and so, Robin is a masterpiece. Okay. <laughs> I, he loves that movie. On I actually, I actually, really actually kind of love that movie uh, for what it is. But I would not fight for it, like you would fight for Daredevil. Do you love when he pulls will, out his fight. Batman credit card that says like "Never leave home without it." Never leave home without it. Mm. Bat nipples. Bat card. Um. So, uh, yeah. So we we had. I was like, oh my god, I forgot about this movie. This. Oh good. Um, ben Affleck, two thousand. What was it? Three. Two thousand. Two thousand three. Yeah. It so, um, let me double check that. High too. Top Films is another YouTube channel uh, that I'd never really heard of or anything, but it wound up popping up, and I was like, "Oh, this looks fun," and Noel recommended it to me. So, the insane story of Daredevil two thousand three is the title of the video. It is forty five minutes to an hour, I want to say. Oh, I think it's less than that. It's it's pretty chunkable. But yeah. my man's went and saw this when he was five years old. He went with his father to the yeah, theater 40. to see this when he was five. He was a big Daredevil fan. I mean. So so much a Daredevil fan that I believe uh, the story goes that his father tells him that in the theater, he stood up and went, where's stick? Um, this little oh five year old. Yeah, his dad, uh, according to the, to the YouTuber, his dad would read to him born again yeah. and uh, stuff. The, the Daredevil. He would read him Daredevil comics. That's uh, incredible. At that time. Yeah. yeah. So he went and go, went and saw this and uh, he just does this super long deep dive into the, the, Sort of road to get to Daredevil and how Mark Steven Johnson kept writing script after script, and even though it kept changing hands to different um, production companies and what have you. Um, and they would always just hire him back on because his passion was so great for this mm -hmm. movie. And I remember at the time hearing how much of a fan he is. And watching this movie, there is no doubt in my mind that Mark Steven Johnson, the director, writer and director, is 100% a Daredevil dude. Mm hmm. And uh, same with Ben Affleck. I wasn't a big Affleck fan. Like I liked him in Goodwill Hunting and oh, yeah. the silly like uh, uh, Kevin Smith films. He makes me cry in Armageddon. Oh, Armageddon! Right? Yeah. I love Is that you, before Harry. or after this? It was before this. It was before this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah. but even I want to say even at the time he was kind of a joke. Was he? Was he uh, the butt of a joke? Uh, yeah, the yeah, well, I mean, anytime that somebody is um, talented and attractive, they're a target. That's probably. But I remember, I feel like he was kind of a joke all at the, the time. time. <laughs> um, but anyway, it, it's, it's you a, ain't lying. It's yeah. a, I know that. <laughs> it's a really good um, YouTube video. If you're interested in Daredevil from 2003, uh, starring I, the songs of Evanescence, oh I, my I God, love I was, to this day. I, 
oh yeah that I'm, movie changed me and my taste that's how i became like emo <laughs> like this movie yeah. I so we it. can trace it back to 2003 um I, I don't think you're doing this 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 video a full service um a, it doesn't matter if you're interested in daredevil if you are at all interested in the troubled making of a movie yeah. this is awesome mm. like they document stuff that they tried to pull off, couldn't pull off how the movie was wrangled away from him. The multiple edits, the direct, like all the notes, it's note after note. They're like, at one point, one of the notes was oh, the suits red. Does it can have we, to be so can we red? do something? Can we do something about this red suit? And you know, also this was before, but nobody the, said anything about the bat nipples. This is, t- this, the bat is, right, right? <laughs> this is like a decade and change before the TV show. Well, and also before yeah. like Marvel was huge. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. This was oh, yeah. MCU. All we had was X-Men movies. Yeah. Oh, and, nice. uh, and Spider-Man. So, oh yeah. yeah. Sam Raimi Spider-Man. And so they even, That's I, I didn't I grew realize up this, on all these. but in, in behind the scenes shots, that suit is bright red, mm-hmm. but the way they film it and the it, color grading that they do to it in post, it looks dark maroon to blackish at times. Um, but it really is like this bright red suit. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's got it's got Mark Michael Clark Duncan as uh the Kingpin. It's got oh, what's his yeah. name as Bullseye. Um, oh, Colin, Colin Farrell. Farrell. Colin Farrell is Bullseye. Farrell. <laughs> just if there is a oh, piece of scenery in this film, like if he's just on set and there's scenery, motherfucker, choose it. He just starts chomping away at the scenery. Yeah. Um, it's so fun. Who is so now bad. the penguin? Yeah. Oh my god. Colin Farrell oh, is that's right. is just fantastic. Yeah, he's, oh, he's so good. First of all, go, go see Daredevil. Daredevil. Yeah. Go rent it. Uh the director's cut. And then go watch this insane story of Daredevil 2003 by High Top Films. All right, guys, thanks uh, for that, joining me in that piece of the show. Uh, let's move on to the other part of the show that I enjoy, which is the main review. We're going to be talking about Furiosa. That's how her theme song uh, goes, it's, right? It's uh, it is. Furiosa, a Mad, Mad Max, Max saga. saga. Okay. Directed by George Miller. Sure. sure. Uh, no, oh, you get, said, go with the credits. Okay. Uh, written by George Miller and Nick Lathoris, starring Anya Taylor-Joy, Chris Hemsworth, Tom Burke, Alila Brown, and Elsa Pataki. Snatched from the green place of many mothers, young Furiosa falls into the hands of a great biker horde led by the warlord Dementus. Sweeping, swiffering through the wasteland, they come across the citadel, presided over by the Immortan Joe. As the two tyrants fight for dominance, Furiosa soon finds herself in a nonstop battle to make her way home. Go. Um, I have a small problem with the title of this movie. Mm-hmm. Saga, I feel, is incorrectly utilized. Or, uh. <laughs> uh? <laughs> yeah. So the, t- the official title is Furiosa colon a uh, Mad Max saga. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't it be a Mad Max story or the Mad Max saga. Right. Not a Mad Max saga. So your, mm. your problem saga is, is that the yeah. of all the stories together. Yes. You don't so think oh, I see what you're saying now. Furiosa yeah. by itself is not a saga. Furiosa itself can be a saga, but they decided to demarcate it as part of the Mad Max saga, not its own separate Mad Max saga. Well, it is, is its mean? own Mad Max saga. That's what you're saying. No. No. I'm saying it is a facet of the Mad Max saga. Mm-hmm. Saga's like a- Or it is a Mad Max story. What's bigger than a saga, though? I don't know. Nothing. The universe. <laughs> like, yeah. saga is the umbrella with which all these stories are told. Yeah. So it would be a part of the Mad Max They're saga. They're all a not part of the Mad Max a saga. A Mad Max saga. So, like, it should be Furiosa, the, like, you know, Furiosa, the Mad Max saga. Like it's a part yeah, of the Mad Max yeah, saga, like, not a Mad Max saga. Or okay. it's a Mad Max story within the larger Mad Max saga. Well, words tell them. matter. <laughs> like, words do literally, matter. Literally words matter. Words this is matter. like uh, in the nitty gritty of uh, 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 hierarchies and, and paradigms of titling. Shit like this matters. And I hate that an entire corporation didn't just like throw out the uh. Yeah. <laughs> just, just make Mad it the. Mad Max saga. Star Wars did it perfectly. Uh, Solo, a Star Wars story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the way you should go. Not and also Twilight did it perfectly. Sorry guys. The Twilight Saga. <laughs> it was yeah. the Twilight Saga. I was it waiting was New Moon. The Twilight for my Saga. My time to shine here. It, yeah. It, I it, see. I see. The Twilight Saga. The paradigm tells you that all of these things put together are a full saga, not mm-hmm. uh, this one story is a yeah, saga. Yeah, it's not 
New Moon, a Twilight Saga. It's can the a, Twilight Saga, New Moon. Can a separate saga in, exist inside of a, a larger That's saga? Right. Can you, can yes. you, in, in saga? So then Inception it would be, a saga? If, if, if so, in this instance, it would be Furiosa, a Furiosa saga. <laughs> you piece the of Mad shit. Max saga. The, yeah. yeah, the Mad Max. Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense. Uh, Other than that, how do four we move stars. on from this? So, four and a half stars, five um, stars. <laughs> all right, so you are a huge... Uh, um, <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road fan. Uh, I think. Uh, are you? Wait, hold on. Are you a Mad Max fan, or are you a Mad Max Fury Road fan? A Mad Max fan. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's the one I I I remember being under ten years old mm -hmm. and watching Road Warrior mm -hmm. and being wildly obsessed with how they pulled that off. Yeah. You know, like I, I don't know anybody's seen Road Warrior. It's 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 I can, honestly it's basically the same movie as Fury Road. Mm -hmm. Um, he, uh, Max agrees to transport, uh, a tanker of gasoline to another location for his own benefit. And then shit goes bad. He has to save a couple of people, but it's basically just a chase movie or the, the whole movie is structured around one chase. So let's, let's backtrack just a, a skosh. Yeah. So if you don't know Mad Max starring. Which one? Mad Max. Oh, uh, uh, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Yeah. Um, the first film is not a post a pre apocalypse. It's it's yeah it's, it's pre apocalypse Australia. It's um, I, yeah I guess pre apocalypse. It's it's what's the it's post and there's pre. What's the middle? Like mid, uh, mid apocalypse. It's mid apocalypse what? Australia. I just, so I know it, anti mortem and post mortem from my job, and then peri mortem's like around peri apocalypse the, so around the time of death. Peri apocalypse, yeah. mid apocalypse. It's it's a uh, during the uh, during yeah. the. Uh, apocalypse. You know the what? dominoes is, are falling. This, it's about to apocalypse. Uh, it's you know about what? to happen. Yeah. Speaking, yeah. Of, speaking of our own personal apocalypse that's going on right now, pretty mid. <laughs> um, so Mad Max, the original, uh, takes place in cool. Perry Apocalypse. Yeah. And uh, he's just a cop. He's a copper. Uh, the main force. Of what? It's just, they're called the main force. Oh. The main um, force police. And, yeah. uh, you know, he comes across bad guys and then bad guys get mad at him and they're like, we're going to murder your family. And then they're they like, do we're that. mad at you, Max. And that's yeah. how the movie. And that's how. Yeah. <laughs> it is, you know what? Let me look mad the, at Max. The, <laughs> yeah. the year it came mad out. Mad at Max saga. <laughs> nice. The nice. Mad at Max saga. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the Mad at Max saga. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Mad um, at Max saga. That would work fine, too. Yeah. <laughs> just it. not the. So All right, um, I brought it back. And so, never, and yeah, and so it's a revenge. Sorry. It's a pretty straightforward revenge tale. And then the Road Warrior uh, is post apocalypse. Post -apocalypse. Uh, and then there is uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, starring Tina Turner. And uh, that's the first one I saw. I believe I don't know if it was in the theaters or what, but I went and saw it with my mom, um, and it blew me away. It was nuts. And uh, it was also the first time I ever realized that there was like a singer, but then they can also act. That's neat. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So then fast forward 30 years till Fury Road. Um, between the two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was almost exactly 30 years. Yeah. So um, these movies, all of them have been written and directed by George Miller. Um, also known for Babe. That's true. Shut up. That's I didn't true. realize that. That'll Happy do Babe. Feet. Yeah. I fucking hate Happy Feet. I, I actually hate Happy Feet too, but it gave him his Oscar, so I'm okay with oh, nice. it. Nice. I love um, Babe. Babe. Babe also a bit of a masterpiece. <laughs> I've never Legit. seen it. It's a what? Oh I've my never god! Seen Next week we're talking about it. It's so it's so good. Uh, babe, Pig in the City, and eh, it's fine. Oh, but, is that a sequel yeah. to Babe? Babe, Babe Two, Pig in the City. Babe Two. That's it. I'll do, all right, pig. I'll do Pig. I'll do. That's Did all you cry I know. A bit? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The very end. I mean, there's no, there's no greater like uh, achievement than that approval in that end of that movie. It was just yeah. like fuck, they man. even reference it in Shrek. That was like my dad's favorite movie. He goes, "That'll do, donkey." Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, he's that'll do. That'll yeah. Big. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So, uh, popular director of Babe, um, George Miller. Uh, he wrote and directed. He co-wrote and directed all of these movies. Yeah. Um, they are a labor of love. They do not come out success <laughs> successively. So the first one was 1979, and I then see. the second one was like 81. Okay, yeah, those were those were back Pretty to back. Close, yeah. And then they had trouble getting Thunderdome put together about four or five years later. And then he was working on Fury Road for 20 years yeah. to get it made and done. And it took about four years to like from start to finish because of storms and funding dropout and blah blah blah. They like Charlize Theron had to shave her head three times. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, because they stopped filming. 
showed footage, were allowed to come back. He had to wait for them to finish other jobs that they were on. Came, oh, like, I didn't realize it was that rough. It was, it was, they shot 450 hours of footage edited to a two hour movie. God damn. That is like, yeah. Okay. Producer, <laughs> producer <laughs> Dylan is like, holy shitting in the corner. How difficult is that? That is literally 1% of all the footage you filmed yeah, that's into a movie. In, that's insane. Uh, yeah, that's nuts. And that's why she won the Oscar for editing that year. Wow. Movie, movie was nominated for 10 Oscars, won six. All technically. Really? Yeah, dude. Oh, it nice. is one of the best movies of the 21st century. It is so good. Or at least the last 10 years. Um, and it took 20 years to make. Yeah. During the course of that production, that development, they wrote two other scripts. Mm -hmm. One of them is Furiosa, this movie, um, which was originally, like you had mentioned, supposed to be uh, an animated movie. Yeah, they were kind of going for the Animatrix type, like Ooh. a couple of different avenues. There's like comic books and we're going to have uh, animated movies and they're all going to tie into each other and you have to read one to get to the other. And, you know. Yeah, from Inception, this was supposed to be the Mad Max Fury Road. A was, saga. <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road was supposed to be a multi-platform story experience. Yeah. Comics, an anime, the movie, a video game, a cooperative video game, the whole nine. And they had scripts for all of it. Uh, the video game became something else. The animated never happened. The comic did happen, but yes. it was just prequel stuff. And they, yeah. And it was no reprints. I think it's only, it was only like published Someone once. Someone just emailed me to, or messaged me today. Be like, hey, do you, can we get those Mad Max comics? And I was like, sure, because um, my distributor says it's available. And so I was like, yeah, man, I'll get that for you. I'll get one for myself while I'm there. And then uh, I put them in the cart, and I went to go check out, and they were like, get these out of the cart. These don't exist. Get out of here. Yeah, they, were like, uh, no, they wouldn't let like, me order them. Fuck you. No, yeah. absolutely not. And then uh, it flipped you off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Suck it. Um, I think that's because George Miller owns the rights to Mad Max. Now, the Warner Brothers does distribute the movie and help fund it, but like, there was a whole legal drama between him and Warner Brothers, and he won the rights back. Ooh. Yeah. But so him, they tried to make yeah. Fury Road at like Fox for a while and it just didn't happen. He ended up, but either way, it doesn't matter. This movie was conceived, uh, Fury Rosa was conceived and written before Mad Max even, or Fury Road ever came out. So these are definitely like of a piece. Yeah. And, it sh and it wasn't supposed to be a movie. Saga. The whole thing was a saga. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This uh, movie alone, a, a saga. saga of a different character? No. Now that you pointed it out, it's going to bother me too. It should bother you because <laughs> grammar does. matters. Grammar matters. Grammar matters. I'm on your side. Is, uh, <laughs> is it Babe, the Mad Max saga? It's, it's Babe, <laughs> a Mad Max story. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. so oh, no, it's I, Babe, a Furiosa story. I also loved um, Fury Road, uh, but it did, I mean, it is just a big chase story, but... Yeah. Um, the stunts and everything, I really sort of wowed at the, the practicality of all the stunts. Uh, how much of that was practical? Because watching this movie doesn't seem quite as practical. Mm -mm. It, was it was it not as was Fury Road also not that practical? And I just didn't notice it. It was hidden better, or was that? No, there was a lot. It was it was very practical with a lot of digital assistance. Mm -hmm. So they would just film like. For like two to three years beforehand, the stunt coordinator who got his start being a bad guy in the first Mad Max movie as a stunt performer, yeah. um, they were they built all of the vehicles, they created all of like the stunts, they practiced with them and had the actor like uh, in Mad Max Fury Road. There's those gimbals that go back and forth, like people jump from car to car Dude. on those big gimbals. Yep. They literally were doing that. Yeah. Okay. In, like in, and so like if there's a giant explosion right next to an actor, that's digitally provided. But if the car like flips around next, that happened. Yeah. Um, the one that I, it's in the trailer. I would it, like in to the see trailer a for Fury Road. Movie. Oh, they're so fascinating. After seeing this, I fell back into a Fury Road hole. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in the trailer, there's a war boy who yeah. does the witness me for the first time, yeah. takes two war sticks and jumps out of car. Such a good that motherfucker it. did that. There's literally like harnesses and gimbals on him and he jumps off of a moving vehicle into another moving vehicle and it stops right before impact. And then he gets like pulled back yeah. and then they just digitally added boom. the afterwards. Yeah. So like they did a lot of it and it was really, really cool. This movie was a little bit more. You could tell they did a lot of shit, but it was a little bit more digital. I feel like a lot, a lot, there was a lot of bits in this movie, Furiosa, where I was like, digital, digital. Oh, that's bad digital. Yeah, like, you know, I, I didn't spend the whole movie 
last time doing that. I but feel this time I was like, oh, that's... I feel super bad. Let's only talk about Furiosa right now because I could talk about Fury mm-hmm. Road for 400 years and you haven't seen it yet. So yes. Okay. You I haven't seen somebody, any Max As somebody mad, who has right? never Maxed... I've never seen an angry any, Max. Any yeah. part of the Mad Max saga you have not... Just babe. Experienced. <laughs> just, <laughs> just babe. <laughs> Which prequel. is like an offshoot. Yeah, yeah. You know what? <laughs> In the world of Mad Max somebody reads a story to their child and it's babe. So it's just like ah, only tangentially like connected. Yeah. 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 But um, what did you think of Furios? I absolutely loved it. Yeah. I had a really fun time. This is also my first time going to the movie theaters alone. Oh, little anxious Alice. Yeah. Went out and I had a fabulous time. And I love I, going by myself. Yeah. I love going with other people. I was going to say that. Yeah. But I also, there are times where I'm like, this is nice. Just yeah. I just, hmm. just sitting there with my junior men's my feet up. It was great. Yeah. Um, Negligible. <laughs> Hold on, Dylan. What's your favorite movie snack? Um, Alice goes with Junior Mints. Junior Mints pretty all the regularly. Way. Every time. Uh, uh, peanut M and M's. Oh, uh, good okay. one too. No, you're both wrong. And I get that is, a lot. Is candy or any snack? Any snack. It's it's popcorn. It's oh, I mean, I got a popcorn too. You fresh, get you get a popcorn. I always get a popcorn yeah. and peanut butter M and M's. I don't. I. I'm I'm one track minded. I don't I usually don't fuck with anything else. Just popcorn mm. and my drink. Um, if my wife gets a candy, I'll have a piece or two. But mm. it's 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 popcorn all day. Yeah. Okay. We cool. actually Sorry, wait. Continue. No, no, no. Now we're talking about candy. I just want to say one more. <laughs> one more Welcome quick to the thing. candy show. I'm just going to talk about how cute my fiance is. But uh, when COVID first <laughs> happened, and like I was sad, like we couldn't go anywhere or do anything. I came home from work one day. I was working in an infectious disease lab, so I still had to go like in person to work. Yeah. And I came home one day, and he had set up our living room, like a little movie theater. Cause he knew I missed going to the movies and he had ordered on Amazon multiple packs of junior mints and he made our kitchen look like a little concession stand so I could still go get my junior mints. And it was so cute. I'd oh my him. God. I'd totally marry him. I'm a I am. terrible Dibs. boyfriend slash husband. Damn it, it was the freaking, I don't even remember what movie we watched. Costa, if you remember what movie it was. Did you take, did, do I want to see pictures of this. Did anybody take pictures oh, of we, this? I might on my, I'm, I might that's on really Snapchat. Cute. Yeah, it was adorable. Uh, Robert Ro- says, Twizzlers. Oh, that's great, a good one too. Twizzlers. Yeah. I am a um, gun to my head. Fruity chewy versus uh, chocolatey. I'll go fruity chewy. I'm gotcha. ending the stream chocolatey. right now. Yeah, I I am not I am not <laughs> anti chocolate. I love that's crazy. caramel and chocolate. That's crazy. But if I was like uh, Haribo gummy bears or M and M's, fuck M and M's. Uh, I'm gonna go with the gummy M&Ms bears the every day, unless it's sour M&Ms. sour sour chewies. I like sour uh, Watermelon chewies. Sour Patch Kids are fantastic. Oh, I get those, those too sometimes. Great. If you put those in the freezer mm-hmm. and then eat them, I used, 10 times better. There was a time when I first discovered uh, Sour Skittles that I ate them. And I used to go to the movies like twice a week. I ate so many bags of Sour Skittles that Did I had burn? sores in my yeah, mouth. There's a, yeah, there's a, oh, there's a threshold. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Furiosa. Furiosa. <laughs> I had an excellent time. Oh, Furiosa Saga. And, go. Uh, yeah. Oh, Furiosa Saga. Comma, babe. Oh. <laughs> I I had never seen any Mad Max yeah. or any Fury Road. And I almost watched Fury Road before going to see this. And yeah. I was like, you know what? I kind of want to see how it is as standalone because I think we had the last time, not no, two times ago when I was on, we talked about Phantom Menace. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned how some people show their kids the prequels first so that they're surprised when Anakin becomes Vader. Spoilers, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, he kills kids too. He does. So many a children. lot of them. Um, so I was like, oh, it'd be interesting if I can do that. What? Sorry. Hold on. You didn't Chris, know this? Later. Oh. No, I understand. No, nope, that's good. Friend of the show, Chris Dunn. Popcorn, but fill the butter halfway, then more popcorn. My man, the, there's the dude behind the counter filling your popcorn bucket. Do you tell the man, just fill it halfway. I'm going to go down there and put butter and there's, then I'm going to come back and you can refill it again. There's typically How do you one get that there. to work? There's one back there too. Oh yeah, I only Usually. I always take it to go get butter. You can mm-hmm. ask them to do that, or uh, yeah, that's uh, possible. There is no way that people that work at movie theaters do not know about layered preference, so they'll either be like, "Yeah, just bring it back here," or but, there's, but we'll if do there's it back like a there. line behind you, people will do it. Oh, yes, um, they're used to it. Says Chris. Damn, uh, that's Chris, cool. Uh, hot take: butter at movie theaters is disgusting and delicious. Absolutely disgusting, and I love it. It's mm-hmm. melted oil, and it's in my veins. It's so like it's just through my mouth. In the how, do you, how do you how do you walk out of the theater not feeling like your face can't breathe? 
Oh no, it's just oh, I do. Yeah, yeah, I you do. know we do. I yeah, we're just like, this it. is great. I hate it. I hate to so shower much. immediately. Yeah, I, <laughs> I know, I I'm just it. sweating oil. Yeah. Like I am a um, giant zit after <laughs> eating. Yeah, I hate it. He I makes me pop it. him it's after just, the movies. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty only, intimate and gross. Uh, yeah, you have to sing a special song. Don't tell him what it is. <laughs> but it's toxic. It's okay, toxic. <laughs> I was going to say that. Toxic. Um, okay. This is it. Um, yeah. So I went in knowing nothing. Yes. I even like I almost looked up a little something about Fury Road before. Like yeah. just to read like the summary, and I was like, no, I want to go in like this is just a movie on its own. Like yeah. see how I feel about it. Did you see a trailer? No, I didn't even see a trailer. Do you, see a, do you even know what this movie is about at no. all? Nope. Nope. Nice. It was yeah. really. That's I didn't cool. know Furiosa was a person. Oh, uh, like ah. I was that oblivious. I didn't know Furiosa yeah. was a character. I was like, that, oh, that's a I love fun. That, fun that word. might be one of the problems why. <laughs> that might be one of the problems why movie theaters aren't really making it right now. Yeah. The fact that it is a prequel to an academy award-winning successful movie yeah. from less than 10 years ago mm. and there's no television that people watch consistently to see it advertised there's yeah. it's targeted to people that would know about it already so I, you in your space i had it's nothing not to compare to you whatsoever i had nothing to compare yeah. to i had no expectations and i loved it i was afraid i wasn't gonna be able to follow along because i know there's a lot of stuff going on Continue. in the wasteland yeah and was i was hard. able to follow along fine I mean, I'm sure there's certain things I might have gotten better. Like right. there were certain Easter eggs that I thought about after, but you know like what? I, I would no, no. Uh, so I mean, I had a great time. Well, no, 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 yeah. no, no. I mean, like there's nothing. I, if anything, you probably had a pure or better experience than mm -hmm. maybe I did, mm -hmm. because every time there was some sort of either foreshadowed or mirrored member berry, yeah, it was like all right, yeah. I, I, I kind of wish. Now that I now that I'm thinking about it, I kind of wish Furiosa came out first. Obviously, and got us to Mad Max uh, Fury Road, just because of the question. Well, we'll get into his spoilers, but there are questions that I would have liked to have unanswered mm. for myself watching Furiosa because the the character is so much fun. Um, Noel, what did you? We both love Fury Road. What did you think of Furiosa? So you kind of ticked on the thing that is stopping me from absolutely loving this movie as oh, okay. opposed to just enjoying it a lot. Um, I think I can compare it to Fury Road because it is a direct line, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, Fury Road is a dialogue light, balletic, and show don't tell. It is like the perfect example of everything is done with emotion and action. We meet in that movie, and I'm gonna be very light on spoilers because I cannot wait to watch a Fury Road movie. I hope we all get together to watch it. We, oh, so we're watching Fury Road. We <laughs> meet all of the characters in Fury Road mid conflict. Yeah, while they are in the middle of making a a choice, a choice is made, and oh, then we're I there. I love that. It is everything you need to know about the character is implied with the choice that they make at the literal first scene you see them in. It was powerful. It's effective. Loved it. Also, this gives me two hours of leading up to that choice that was already really effective for me in the first one. Mm -hmm. So is it interesting? Is it cool? Do I get to see more of the wasteland and all of the factions and the the political interplay between Gastown and Ammo Farm? And yeah, yeah, all yeah. fucking cool. Yeah. Did I need it? No. Mm -hmm. It kind of took the shine a little bit out of like that balletic impulsive crazy experience okay fair a little bit um i did not have that experience uh i was just as enamored with furiosa as oh, yeah. i was with fury road um I, just as soon because i wa actually walked out because i saw people on someone on twitter was like who asked for this and i was like literally me <laughs> if, as soon as fury road was over i went to my wife I want a Furiosa. Like, I don't even need Mag Mad Max anymore. Get him out of here. I want Furiosa movies for the rest of my days. Like, I just, I liked her so much. They had to go backwards, though. I know. Mm. It's, the, it's a perfect, perfect ending. Yes. And the same with Max. They have to go backwards because that is such a perfect. I do wish that we still had Charlize Theron. I understand we can't because it's a little girl, but I, she could have, right? They could have just, like, younged her down you a little bit. You had trouble with the special effects. Yeah. As it was. Yeah. It would have been a little bit too um, yeah. also, uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of he Destiny. He didn't have oh. the best time filming Fury Road. Oh, None yeah. of them did. None of them did at all. Well, I mean, wait, do you mean just 
what it takes to make those types of movies in the desert and all of the problems they had, or were there like personal yes. things? Oh, oh all, of the, all of the above? Oh, no. Yeah, so the movie took 20 years to make, uh, and during the course of that, George Miller understood every single fa- piece of it. Everything was incredibly complicated. So, like, they would film for one whole day, one three-second sequence of one of the car chases, and they would do it completely out of order. And because he was dealing with stunts, uh, impracticalities, special effects, and weather at the same time because it, they they filmed in Namibia so it was 110 degrees don't know where that is Africa thank you uh, like the middle oh, bottom yeah, of yeah, Africa yeah, yeah. like 110 degrees or freezing yeah. like on the same 24 hour period it was very intense and very crazy and all of them say like George did not have time for the actors oh. period so which i kind of get they but... were totally on a, like there was no real script either it was like 400 panels oh it was all um it was all storyboards storyboards yeah. so on shooting there was really no script it was just we're in this part of the movie we're in this part of the movie so they all hated it and then tom hardy screaming matches with george mill uh george miller Ooh. and uh charlize theron screaming matches with tom hardy and then back really? and, yeah they fucking huh. they all fucking hated each other oh that sucks i hate knowing that there's well no no, no it's great though because they had to start and stop production like three times yeah. Um, in between, like Tom Hardy would send Charlize Theron notes about like, oh, fucking, I hated it. You hated it, but I kind of miss you. Stuff oh, like that. Yeah, like, sure. like we were stuck in war together. Yeah. And, uh, after the first screening at like a press junket, um, Tom Hardy, like tearfully apologized to George Miller. Like, I didn't know what the fuck you were doing and I was mad all the time, but after seeing it, like. I am so sorry. Oh, that's yeah. great. But yeah, they, it was not a good experience. So, oh. and I heard stuff kind of like that. Like, and Anya Taylor Joy, you asked, like, apparently in a press conference, they asked her, like, how was it? And she was like, ask me in 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it looked like, I mean, this was hard. The, yeah. Looking at both of these movies, it is not surprising. No. Yeah. Like, no. That does not look like a pleasant experience for anyone. Mm-mm. Right. Mm-mm. Um, but, except Chris Hemsworth. He looked like he had a great fucking time. Thank you for bringing him up. He was, he was delightful this entire film. I I had so much fun watching him. Uh, Every time he was on screen, he stole it. Yeah. He just stole the screen away from us. I would like to see Dementis, a Mad Max story. No, no, no. Dementis, a Furiosa story. Yes. Because he doesn't cross paths with Max at all. Yeah. Um, Yeah. yeah, The Mad Max saga. So I've, I've heard people complaining that they MCU'd mad max is that just because oh. hemsworth was in it and was charming and funny i oh. think like making like i don't know i thought it was like just prequels and sequels and stuff no, i don't know or connected I, I thought it was like um god what are the words for it when they make like little quips or yeah, jokes yeah, yeah. like yeah They're very quippy that's what when people isn't say he, like they marveled it that's what i think of but yeah. like it's he t- so weird that yeah undercutting drama we, with quips right isn't yeah. it so weird that none of us know what the fuck they mean because they yeah. complain about absolutely yeah. everything yeah. I, this is yeah. what i assume yeah. i doesn't yeah. bother me what the i fuck does that mean yeah i thought chris hemsworth was great. he was I awesome he was yeah. really yeah. good he villain. Really, i was like i was wondering i think i've ever seen him play a villain right no i haven't spider head but I didn't watch all of it. Oh, I've that. never seen that. Yeah, he knows. Yeah. Um, should we get into spoilers? Uh, yeah. Um, if anybody has not had a chance to see this, see it in the largest screen possible. Go to the theaters for God's this sake. Is, Go by yourself. It's this fun. This is a yeah. wonderfully <laughs> immersive, fun, wild movie. Um, if the idea of show don't tell and minimal dialogue, but all pulse pounding awesomeness appeals to you, do it. It was yeah. Great. Even um, if you've never seen any Mad Max before. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I had a fun time. That, that POV. It's worth it. What did, how did you think about, how did you feel about the story structure? Oh, it was, it was, have they, have they ever done no. that before with the cards, the title no. cards, the chapter cards? See, I didn't know if that was a Mad Max thing. No, no, no it's I'm out not. of nowhere and it felt a little jarring. It but did. I was like, okay. Also, they didn't always like match. I don't know. It was fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing I wanted to talk about earlier was uh Chris Are we in Hemsworth. spoilers now? Yeah, spoilers. So I I would have liked I enjoyed him so much. Uh Dementis. And, and Dr. Dementis. He Do- gave himself a title. Dr. Dementis. And yeah. then he they he gets hit with the red stuff 
And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, fuck yeah. Now I'm Red Dementis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just love him. He was like always on the, he was just um, kind of yeah. vibing with everything. Like, Sounds oh, this change, time. I'm going to do this. Um, and I think if I had I seen this and then Mad Max Fury Road, it would have been nice to not know who was the main bad guy moving forward. Like, I didn't know Dementis was going to die in this one. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so I didn't know, you know. But yeah, I, I had no idea. I was oh, like. Well, like, you, you didn't. You I'm sorry, I did. Having seen. Yeah. You, I did yeah. know that he was going to die. That's what I meant to say. I did not. Um, but um, because I know that a Morton Joe is the main baddie of the next film. Mm -hmm. Which did you kind of set up in the end of this one with yeah. her bringing the peach? No, yeah. But I yeah. mean. Getting, you knew going in. Going in. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been nice to be. And I, also, I probably would have been sad. I'd be like, like oh, they killed him. Going into Star Wars prequels, not knowing Anakin becomes that's Vader. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I um, a Morton Joe was dope in this movie. Oh my god, he looks yeah. so cool. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know it, what he it, looks like in the other ones, but uh, the same. <laughs> older. It's a different bushier eyebrows. It's, is all a, you get. it's actually it's a different actor because the original actor passed away, oh. I believe, and this was like a, a younger guy, which mm -hmm. made sense, but. He's in the in the in Fury Road. He's a little bit more of just a, a, a ornery old king kind of a thing. And so this cool. one, he is such a tactician yeah. and is like a politician. And I'm mm -hmm. like, that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, like yeah. he's very. This is how he got his job. Yeah. <laughs> Who yeah. was his Scrotus? So, no, his Scrotus children. And Rictus. His Scrotus and Rictus. <laughs> yeah, they were and some, literally. It was yeah. literally yeah, yeah. Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. Um, the guy in the suit next to him with the nipples cut out. And he would just, oh, and he had he like, just sit there he had a gas mask on his junk. Like that was, um, and uh, on his nose. I forget his actual name. He's always constantly he's, metal thing on his yeah. He's basically the banker. Yeah. Okay. Also, I think I read that he's a former politician in Australia. Wow. Oh. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and that's his thing. Just every time he's nips. talking, he's, he's just like, rubbing. I need access to my nipples at all fucking times. So all my suits have holes. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't notice that at first. The first thing I noticed was the gas mask on his pants there's right over of, his junk. And I was like, what is that? And then I was like, what is he doing with his hands? And I'm like, oh my God. Well, when, you, <laughs> well, like, when you learn that all of oh. all of the citadels just so in the names, Gas Town, you guys must do gas. Mm -hmm. Ammo farm, you guys must do ammo. Yeah. Bullet farm, yeah. Bullet farm, sorry. Um the Citadel, when you learn that it's milking and birthing, yep. It's like Oh. Yep. Gross. All these guys are fucking awful. Mm -hmm. I knew they were awful before, but mm -hmm. hot damn. Yeah. 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 It was pretty bad. Um, I think the only takeaway from this movie that was negative for me was the CG at certain times because there it seemed out of place in in scenes that it didn't even need it. Uh there's a scene where the the Furiosa, you know, baby Furiosa goes into the birthing um uh the vault. vault, the vault, the birthing vault. vault. Women are um, and belts. you know, it's just you know, it's the they same scene things. as you saw in Fury Road, where it's got the steps coming down, and it's sort of this sh this shot going in, and there's a woman walking down the steps, and that woman is CG. The way she walks is very jagged and strange, and she's obviously been sent like put in there. And I'm like, why did they even? You didn't need that woman walking down the steps. What? Do, so strange. There's um. Also, too, there's a there's a sense of uh, when you see a sequel, and I know this isn't a sequel, but it did come out after. There's usually a sense of escalation. Mm. Um, this movie, which I like, de-escalated because even the action scenes in this are much smaller comparatively. Mm. Um, but it increased on the you know the emotional appeal or just like the story. So I like that, but I also still bristle at the fact that. I got all that already in the first one. Like her, her store, her arc in this movie was just vengeance for the most part. It was basically just vengeance. She finally found a home and it still was taken from her. Um, but I knew that because that was the same exact emotional arc that she completes for the most part in Mad Max. So it's just, it, it was a journey that I enjoyed going on. Yeah. But I still, at the end of it was like, Oh, all right. Mm -hmm. I yeah. Didn't, I didn't no, guess I didn't I need that. I didn't I guess I didn't need that. that, but it I was cool that it was need there. It, but I loved it. Um, it didn't give me anything that I needed to know from from Fury Road. Like everything I needed from Furiosa, I already got. I, I, but I, I just like I don't character. know why. I just feel allergic to saying love. No, I loved it. I thought I it was it. fucking cool as hell and really good, but love is hard for me to say because I loved what had already happened and this didn't yeah. offer me anything new sure. other than Dementis. Yeah. 
That's, yeah. And and Praetorian Jack. Fucking coolest dude. Yeah. Oh, he and was so cool. Who's not Mad Max. But you know what, Very though? Very close. You know mm-hmm. what, though? As soon as they introduce him, you have that wonderful sequence where she tries to stow away and it's really, really good. Uh, and you then don't even know she's there. No. Until, and, then, uh, and then he's like, hey, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about road war. Yeah. Next scene. Yada, yada. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't get to and see now that. now you know. Yeah. And that was, we're here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Arguably, that was the most interesting point yeah. of her progression from this to this. And they cut it all. Yeah. Out. I like, imagine the they fuck? filmed it. But like, I don't uh, but did. Did I need for almost 40 minutes of pre Anya Taylor Joy Furiosa. Okay, that was it was pretty cool. Would I have preferred yeah, Anya mm-hmm. Taylor Joy becoming Furiosa, like legitimately becoming yeah, the yeah. Praetorian or the Imperator? Yeah. yeah. That's true. I they spent a lot of time with Anakin and then they yada yada the Vader bit. Like yeah. Just, yeah. I the the movie that was the most interesting that would have really like cut its teeth just seemed like it was left out yeah. and that i it's, as much as i liked this it still kind of was like is there a director's cut of fury road no that's so that's so neat to me that Zack snyder will have director's cuts but then like this guy who has like a million hours of footage was like nah, i'm good um george miller's so to compare the two george miller's a master storyteller <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. uh george miller is very much a dude that's like best idea wins most efficient act. Like, do I need the dialogue to explain it? Maybe. Can I do it without it? Fuck yeah, get rid of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone freaks out at him on film Twitter about, like, he thinks that actors are useless and you don't need dialogue. And he's like, no, I think actors are wonderful. I just also think that you can have them emote instead of soliloquy. Yeah. So and I, that's awesome. Emotions. Yeah. So he's like, he is all about, like, he just has this weird natural habit of being the most efficient mm-hmm. and going for it. If anything, this was probably his. In the Mad Max movies, yeah, this yeah. is probably his most like long in the tooth mm-hmm. feeling. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I do agree with that. Yeah. It, it Road Warrior was. Oh no, no. Um, Beyond Thunderdome was a little bit more talky. Mm-hmm. Also, the way that Max was in the original movies is a little bit more cocky and braggadocious. In these more current movies, he is just get out of my way. Yeah. And does not say anything. Just yeah. get out of my way. You that over there. I I will say that. Um, all the people who were like, you can't, wasn't, was it Kathleen Kennedy who had said something about the reason Han Solo, Solo didn't work is because you just shouldn't recast uh, with different actors. It's like, you can, I feel like Mad Max Fury Road wants a word with you. Like, yeah, um, you can do it and mm-hmm. it's fine. Um, so uh, I, people don't take, people don't give audiences credit. Yeah. Like you could, um, we were another movie I put on in the shop that no one likes and shouldn't. Superman Returns. Oh, I still like that movie. Most of it. You don't. Half of it. You like three sequences. That's true. I do. In a two and a half hour movie. I do. I do. Yeah, That's true. Come on. Um, but that was a movie that loosely took the continuity of 35 year old movies yeah. and just recasted it. Yeah. I don't need to explain anything. That's not a multiversal blah, blah, blah. It's just, I just recasted yeah. it. And when they were talking about like, um, what are we going to do with the flash? If this movie's popular and be like, just recast it. Yeah. Oh, you can make it like an in universe. Like why? Yeah, just, just recast, recast it. it. Yeah. yeah. Like same thing with, with uh, Jonathan majors. Yeah. Just recast. Who just cares? Recast him. Uh, they did it with the Hulk like twice. Three, yeah. yeah. And who There's cares? Three different Hulks. <laughs> just recast. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. yeah. People aren't stupid. They also don't need to be like spoon fed. Just yeah. do it. Mm. Do it. It's a good movie. No one gives a shit. It's a good slogan. I feel like some. Just do it. I don't think anybody's company. got that. Yeah, I think some companies no, should I use think that. If anything, yeah. maybe like Doritos. Just do it. Just do it. Just, yeah. do it. just Doritos. Just I mean, that's what I, when I see a bag of Doritos. Like, just, just do, do it. it. Just do it. I'm at the gas station. Like, and then I start crying. Do it. <laughs> um, is there anything else we want to say about Mad, uh, a Mad Max Saga Furiosa? <laughs> go see it. Uh, go they see should it. have recast T'Challa, says uh, Robert Monroe Jr. Uh, take- I mean, sure. Yeah. 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 And they probably will someday. Yeah. But I mean, the people they kind of already did, right? The people mm-hmm. that were making that movie felt it would be insincere. And I'm not going to argue with them yeah. about mm-hmm. it. Anything else about Mad Max or Fur- Furiosa? Um, this movie made me want to shave my head, but I don't think I'd look as good. So. Oh, no, you know what? I, I do have something thing, I'd yeah, like to say. Head, another, <laughs> another negative takeaway. When's your wedding? You got time. <laughs> Which, right? <laughs> October 2025. Oh, you um, got so much time. Of time. Plenty of time. <laughs> was that bitch? Um, was that bitch? Um, <laughs> your head, I mean. I, um, oh, 
Anya Taylor Joy's bald wig and it looks like an alien. fake hair. Yeah. Awful. Awful. Oh, I, see, wish, I didn't think like, it was that bad. She, it made me want to shave my it? head. I mean, I, I, I don't think she did. I don't think she did. I, I think knew, that's a bald cap and a fake The, the long fake hair, hair was. No, I think she. Did she? So the scene that it looks the see, most real is when she's. This is what I'm afraid people will say when I shave my head. The is scene that I look like an it alien. looks the most real is when she's cutting it. Yeah. Like that is a shaved head. Yeah. But. Um, I, yeah. I also just want to say, I know we got a lot of her younger. Again, I had no mm-hmm. expectations of what yeah. the story should be. I loved seeing that little girl kick ass in the beginning. Oh it's my God. Good. I saw That was so fun. I haven't looked it up, but I saw a thing. Furiosa. George Miller wouldn't let Anya Taylor J- Joy shave her head for Furiosa. Why? That's weird. Charlize Theron went bald as the character, but Miller wanted Taylor Joy to keep her locks for the prequel. Probably, well, I mean... For all that stuff, but also probably just she's she's only bald for like two sequences. That's in this. true. But it's also, not a lot of the movie. I mean, that's not her fault. She says, "I was so excited to shave my head." Then George saw me in real life and went, "No, we can't." Which is funny. I was in my head. I was blaming her for not shaving her head, but she was like, "Fuck it, I'll do it." Um, I mean, it goes back, but um, also too, he probably so big. He probably um, he probably had like. Bad flashbacks of like asking Charlie's Theron to do it do constantly. Do it three times. Yeah. yeah. In between filming and stuff. Learned his lesson. What a but cap on. That's that was that was one of the only things where I'm like, oh, she just looks so weird with that big head, that big I bald didn't cap. even clock that. Oh, uh, sorry. No, it's okay. Now you will. Yeah. Now I'm not um, gonna shave my head because I think you're gonna think I look like an alien. Well, just would. don't wear a bald wig and then yeah, fake hair on top. If you're hiding two inches of hair <laughs> yeah. behind a bald cap, you do look like an cap. alien. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um all right, uh, listen, go to the movie theaters, y'all, and watch Furiosa, a, a Mad one. Max story. Um, what's coming out this week in the theaters? Because I'm, I'm, whatever it is, I'm sure it's not as good as Furiosa. Um, what's coming out this week? I have week? no idea. See, that's the problem. See? What's I, coming out but this I, week? I never know what's coming out what's in coming movies out until week? they're out. So, uh, if I can find it before somebody in the chat does. What is coming out in movie theaters this week, the 31st? Dylan, do you know? Dylan. Going to my regal no, I'm I'm not not movie no. podcast. Not loading. The God Garfield damn. movie. That if, happened last week. Last week. Um, uh, May 31st. Oh, the limited engagement of Spider-Man No Way Home? That's not what I, I'm Jesus Thirsts. I need you what to help me not make things worse. <laughs> <laughs> IQ? What is uh, Jesus actually, like, Thirsts? Nothing, like, it's nothing, a Jesus movie. I don't think anything comes out this week. Thirsty Jesus. Ezra. In a violent nature, in in like limited screens. The Lord of the Rings are going to be back in theaters June Ooh, 8th, 9th, yeah, and 10th. Coast there and is, I are going. There That's is cool. no new movie coming out this week. Go see Furious. Go see Furious. Do yeah. it. Um, and then also watch Fury Road because it's dope as hell. And then June 7th, you can go see Bad Boys Ride or Die. Um, <laughs> but next week. Uh, I'll be there. I'll see you there. Noel will not be here. Oh, no. I hate uh, you. Aww. But we're going to be discussing. Acolyte? Acolyte. Star new Wars. Star Wars show. The new woke Star Wars show. Yeah. And maybe Aww. me and you can talk about a horror movie. We'll have to figure that out. I uh, like horror. Yeah, let's all talk about horror movies. Oh, that's true. It's just Brian. It's huh? just Brian. Nice. All right. Mm. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. And we, oh, you know what? Oh, we already did that part. We already yeah. said hi to the Omnibuds. Hi, Omnibuds. Again, we miss you. Hi. Go see Furious, everybody. Okay, yeah. love you. And we'll talk at you later. Bye. 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 Young John.